Game two between Doodle and Scout, part of Hasi <laughs> Hasu League from BSL Season 12. I feel like I uh, do that a different order every time. This is on Shakura's Temple, which is from, I just looked it up, ASL Season 10. This is a popular map amongst the ladder players. You've got that natural expansion here, pretty wide open natural. Not a lot of builder buildable ground on the outside, which makes it a little bit harder uh, to pull cheeses off. This weird kind of mineral patch in the, in the middle there. But uh, a third base that's a little bit exposed, where you kind of have to control some of the map to get towards it. There's also kind of a ramp. You, this is usually the more popular mineral expansion to take from that bottom right-hand corner. But point being, this is a map that has a lot of minerals on it. It is a four-player map. It is more macro-oriented. Might play a little bit more towards Scout's favor, where it looked like he wanted to get into a macro-oriented match. And just wasn't able to do so. But Doodle, honestly, as far as like late-game macro, was able to just straight up push through everything. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Scout as the red Zerg. Excuse me, by the way, Overlord is going to the upper left-hand corner initially. We have Doodle scouting counterclockwise, so he's gonna end up coming across Scout's base last. And actually, a little bit, okay, Doodle is not familiar with this map or has not played it in a while because it looks like he ended up scouting the wrong location because he didn't fully go into that upper right-hand base. He's going gateway first. Maybe he was hoping to see a drone scout or something along those lines. He's going to be able to wander up. He might catch this Overlord and have an idea of where his opponent is momentarily, which is going to be lucky. He's lucky that there wasn't anything in that upper right hand base. And oh, that's that's close. Oh, it just ended up ahead of the Overlord. So finally, scouting the upper left. Let's see if he ends up moving this drone scout back to the or the probe scout back to the right. Or if he, in fact, does continue bottom left. Gateway warping and now there it looks like there was a 12th hatch from Scout behind this. Now scouting this. Yeah, now he knows that he's on the right trail. Still no Scout from Scout. As far as drone or otherwise. He is plopping down that gas. Is going to want to save those larvae to deal with this incoming zealot. Two zealots being produced. Looks like that drone is starting to move out to do at least a bit of initial scouting. He's going to see that zealot while it's in transit. And unfortunately for Scout right now, he has spent... So the spawning pool is on its way. He's going to have... I think that with the timing of it, this is like a commentator trying to remember in his brain based on just timing of everything. I think he's going to have like two larvae to work with. So he's going to be able to produce four zerglings to deal with this initial zealot. But and he's going to need it because the zealot's going to be right on top of this base in that natural expansion before these four Zerglings are spawning. So here we go. So Zerglings there, Zealot's already in the natural expansion. This is gonna provide an additional larva to get some more Zergling out, assuming there's money to do so. Zergling speed is upgrading, and the drones have pulled off gas otherwise. And now, so basically it's exposed drones with the Zerglings just spawning and the Zealot's already on top of them, creating a little bit of economic disruption. Second Zealot on the way, there's also a probe there to be annoying in the natural expansion. You can see on the minimap a bunch of stuff being dropped inside Doodle's natural expansion. The Zerglings able to get right on top of that Zealot. Looks like as, some, as something spawned there, it got taken out very rapidly by that Zealot and that probe. Perhaps, I'm not sure if it was a drone or a Zergling. Probe taken out very quickly. A little bit of Miss Micro there by Scout not going after the weak Zealot, not able to take him out as a result. I don't think he's going to be able to get any additional kills out of this. And some nice disruption there with a drone drill. So, needs to be careful with this Overlord at the natural. It's going to take a little bit of damage from that cannon. Nexus warping up. Doodle really didn't get any economic damage done there. So yeah, he forced some Zerglings. But wasn't able to get any economic damage. He was able to keep up with his macro otherwise. And he's sitting at 19 probes. Sending out another scout. Let's see if it can sneak through or if scout's going to be able to hunt it down. Keep in mind these zerglings do have zergling speed upgraded. And this is where, at the very least, I'm expecting a force and kind of a slowdown of some sort of error. Although scout still needs to keep that overlord alive. This is going to make, if, if Doodle ops, popping down second cannon, if Doodle ops to go ahead and go for some sort of airplay here, get an initial Corsair out. That initial Overlord is going to be very weak and vulnerable and very easy to take out right off the bat. Although, he'll probably want to move it to the base to get some scouting information first. And I think he is going for that. Or some t might even go for double Stargate with the second Assimilator. We'll see. First, uh, second Photon Cannon 
down at the natural expansion just realizing that he's going to be in, in the dark for quite some time. Scout sticking to two bases, going two hatch, Mutalisk. It looks like to follow this up. I like that play, realizing that, okay, he lost those initial two Zealots. He's got a little bit of delayed Nexus. He's going to have to play back into this. So mind games both directions. Stargate is warping in. I'm wondering if we're going to see a second Stargate or even Weapons 1 upgraded behind this. Doodle moving out with three Zealots to try to force some more Larva to be expended. We do see that Spire now at the natural. The Zerglings grouping up, getting back towards the main. A few additional Zerglings being produced. There is an additional hatch now being produced at that 9 o'clock location. Zerglings swooping in, having some difficulty getting in position. Some nice little stutter step micro there by Doodle, but he's going to end up losing those two Zealots. Fortunately for him, this Zealot is going to be able to just walk in and see that third hatchery being built. Doesn't know, So he doesn't know the style of tech, but he does know that at least he's up against a little bit more of a delayed... A little bit more of a delayed uh, play here. As far as just a huge amount of Mutalisks. I don't know, nine, nine Mutalisks being produced and endlessly pouring out. Initial Corsair in production should be able... Let's see if it goes for that Overlord first. We do see level 1 weapons being upgraded. Both air and ground. So Corsair Zealot to follow this up. And here's the thing, yeah, because of all that damage this Overlord took initially, and because of that scout at the 9 o'clock, this Overlord's going to get taken down, honestly, a little bit faster and more easily than I think it should have. I don't know. Maybe it's a minor thing. But Doodle should want to go ahead and get that Corsair out there to get additional scouting information. Needs, And he is plopping down a second Stargate. Love it. So he's going to go big air here. To follow this up. That means Scourge, or these Scourge could be critical. Take out first Corsair and see the second Corsair knowing there's some dedication to air. It looks like they're chasing them down on a cutoff route. Scout missing. Nice little maneuver around by Doodle. That's huge. But the Scourge going to be able to wander into the main. They're going to see a Citadel of a Dune. Going to be able to take out an additional Corsair. Almost! A cannon warping in. Run, Scourge, Run! Don't just patrol, run. But seeing this amount of Corsair, Scout has to know that he's up against some sort of significant airplay. And and the question is, is okay, do you just do you just pump the Mutalisks? Do you get the additional Scourge? Keep that count low? Do you get Spore Colonies at various locations? This is honestly looking a little bit like Bisu build-ish play. Templar Archives warping in. Unfortunately for Scout... Yes, he took out that initial Corsair, but he wasn't able to land with his additional units. And now we're seeing a robotics facility. So now Doodle actually transitioning. So that's interesting. He's getting all forms of tech. It looks like he's, he wants to go with drop with these DT. These Scourge going to be able to wander in, see that second Stargate, and the Robo. This is very bold. Honestly, usually when you see Bisu Buildish style play, and still actually, I think he did he land with any, any of those? He does land with one Scourge. Corsair fleet moving out. I don't know that Scout has a large enough air force. Oh, never mind. He has a, a sizable air force to deal with this. Still needs to spread those Mutalisks well and micro against this, particularly with that level 1 weapons about to come online. He's waiting on his Carapace and some Scourge to perhaps join. So it's going to be a fight for the air. Doing a split. Some of the Mutalisks not grouping in. More Scourge wandering in. These Mutalisks need to be joining this battle for... Scout to win it, or to at least capitalize on it. Looks like he's going to win it regardless. Too many Mutalisks for Scout. Pressing forward, he absolutely dominates the air right now. Dark Templar now wandering out on the ground. This, honestly, this robotics facility confuses me a little bit. Dark Templar moving, or walking across, and now the main of Scout. Desperately at risk. Just, that's so many Mutalisks. Looks like he is going to back off. With his Muta Force, some drones looks like a little bit misrallied. Once these Scourge get grouped back in, there's still... Here's the thing. Yeah, Doodle needs to be careful because if these Scourge land on top of these Corsair, that cannon is not going to provide enough defense. Two Corsair taken out, but still the Mutalist is not grouped. And so they're going to back off. And, and so Scout having some trouble defending his base. 9 o'clock base in the meantime. 
a handful of drones taken out there by a Dark Templar. Still, it's going to be air battle versus air battle. Currently, Doodle has a lot of probes, but still is just stuck to two bases. Opening up his main, moving around with Zealots and some Dark Templar. Really wants to win this air battle. He's still just been relegated to keeping about six Corsair. And Scout moving again with some Scourge towards the main. Some Zer Zergling ex kind of taking a, a look at the main. There's, just, there's also a lot of tech that's honestly exposed here of Doodles to these Mutalisks. So we got, what is this? One, two, nearly two control groups. A single Mutalisk wandering in to go ahead and see what's up. Carapace 1 is going to come online. There is an Archon being morphed at the Natural Expansion to provide some additional support there. The Corsair fleet needs to be careful. Looks like another Corsair going to get picked off. Maybe. By some Scourge. Now the Mutalisk regrouping, going to regather. Scourge able to get on top of another Corsair. But Mutalisk engaging the Archon wholesale and just getting shredded. So Scout, honestly, I feel like he has the tools to push in and make it happen. But his unit control has not been there to really capitalize on his advantages. Shuttle still slowly making its way to the 9 o'clock base. He is sim sitting himself out. So that, honestly, with the three Zealots and that Dark Templar, they might be able to completely shut down that 9 o'clock base. We'll see momentarily. Level 2 weapons on the way. Actually, they're going to approach on the ground. So with that SimCity, that might be the difference here. The drone not able to get in the gap, though, to provide the defense it really needed to. Another Sunken Colony warping in. The Mutalists coming in retreat. There is an Overlord to detect that High Templar. Or that Dark Templar, sorry. So one drone down. One drone, one Sunken Colony. It looks like three drones. Able to provide a little bit of disruption, but I don't know that it was a beneficial trade. What this does do is this buys Doodle time. And currently, he has been macroing like a madman. He's at 106 supply. Has a significant Corsair Archon Zealot fleet. I'll call it a fleet because, you know, air, ground. The Navy, it's a fleet, right? Moving forward, some Scourge are patrolling across that corner. And they are starting to make their way into that natural expansion. No Hydalisks to provide support just yet. Corsair grouping up, trying to chase things down. And the Mutalisk army has rejoined. Scout wanting to dive on top of those Zealots, wipe them out. Doodle has snuck into that 3 o'clock location. While he dives at the 9 o'clock with these Zealots. Keep in mind, it takes a while for Mules to take Zealots down. There's also those Creek Colonies underneath. The drones trying to migrate themselves to that upper left-hand corner so they won't be exposed. One of them getting taken out. But it looks like that Zealot army is going to be wiped out basically with no counter for Doodle. 3 o'clock base is discovered. Scout seeing it. The Corsairs have been doing work in the meantime. Some Overlords just have been wandering to the 6 o'clock. So he, Scout, in the red. By he, I mean Scout. <clears throat> Zealous able to clean up that 3 o'clock. But that's not going to hold long against all of these Mutals diving in to go ahead and deny that. Scout, I think, has the advantage here. If he can just hold up and keep his macro up and get favorable engagements. At the moment, he controls the air. At the moment, he's denying Doodle a third. And he has three bases himself. But he needs to not lose these Mutalisks. He needs to continue to keep that Corsair count low. And he needs to continue to basically somehow deny this third base. Archon is there. A lot of Corsair as well. Taking a lot of free hits. As he went for that initial engagement. Does land with one Scourge right there. And Doodle once again grouping up to do another attack while he gets that 3 o'clock Nexus up. Zealots streaming their way towards the 9. Mutalus not wanting to headlong engage against this Corsair force. And I think that's all the defenses, aside from a sizable SimCity that Scout has. Scourge not landing on top of those Corsair. Evolution Chamber is going to get taken down. That had the armor upgrade. That's going to get wiped out without much fuss. There's also Archons engaging right on top of these Mutalisks. Some Lurkers are there. They're going to burrow. That's going to send Doodle back. He has no observers to deal with this. He's getting caught a little bit with his pants down. Honestly, I feel like just attack at this stage. Take that Corsair fleet down. If you can. You got Hydalisks right there. If you can pin him in place, do the damage. Regathering. So, do, so Scout now able to shell up a bit. But he doesn't just need to shell up. He needs to 
Stop Doodle from expanding. A lot of Lurkers grouping up. It looks like he's going to try to take an expansion himself. Honestly, he's taking so much damage just fleeing from these Corsairs rather than just turning around and engaging. And that's just kept these Mutalists mostly ineffective. Down to 7 health across. Yeah, if you got the Carapace upgrade and you're working with it, just, you know, keep them alive or just completely keep them out of the fight. I don't know. 3 o'clock base. Starting to, we'll see if there's a transition, but it's starting to produce four doodle. His main is empty. His natural expansion, still functioning. He's going to have to, and we're kind of a similar situation to game one, where doodle has kept up with his macro. He's got a practical 50 supply lead, a very formidable army out there. Doodle stopping a fourth expansion with those mutalisks. But Doodle needs need some army on the ground to deal with what I, he's mostly trying to play passively with some lurkers. And we got a battle probe. I love it. High Templar joining that grouping. It looks like they have a handful of Psy Storm to be able to provide the effort. We do, ha we do have Ventral Sacks being upgraded for some potential drops. And now in this kind of lull, it looks like Scout is starting to get some of his attack force together. No upgrades currently. Keep in mind that Evolution Chamber was taken out in that front base. These Zealots have level 2 weapons. These Lurkers mostly undefended. We don't have any sort of Hive Tech out. Queen's Nest just being plopped down. And I think this is mostly going to get cleaned up. Some Hydralis is trying to regroup from the bottom. That's a lot of Psystorm bait though. Psystorm's catching some Lurkers. They're actually going to pin those Mutalists against those Zealots. Able to pick off one Observer. There's still plenty of additional Observers and Psystorm everywhere coding the Hydralis's and the Lurkers. Fortunately for Scout, the Lurkers were able to just do work on those Zealots in the interim and really mitigate that attack force. The Mutalists are going to sneak across and dive and check that 6 o'clock. There's still plenty of Zealots and reinforcements coming across. A lot of additional Dragoons. The Mutalists trying to rejoin. that. This outside 9 o'clock base is certainly going to get wiped out very rapidly and now Doodle in a bit of trouble as he's contained essentially the three bases. Well, Doodle has established his third. So it's basically two bases versus one base, but the upgrades, I think, could be the difference here. Big grouping of Mutalisks engaging on the high ground. The Archon's getting on top of them. Where's the Psystorm? Psystorm catching all, almost, yeah, every single Observer, unfortunately. There are no Lurkers on the ground to really capitalize on that, though. Two Lurkers on that corner. And it looks like the Zealots are going to be able to jump on top of these Hydalisks. So Doodle not doing himself any favors. Psystorming all of his own detection points. And as a result, is going to have to just stay up on the high ground while he morphs another Archon in. And these Zealots, who need to be careful, they're taking some free damage while this Lurker <laughs> is there burrowed. So Doodle doing scouts work for him. 9 o'clock base, or sorry, 3 o'clock base has been established. Dragoon's going to sneak up, take out... Well, maybe. Lost uh, lost the Observer, it looks like. Somehow. That was unusual. They were able to do the initial attack, and then I guess it was unburrowed. That must have been what happened there. So it's going to be a minute before Doodle's really able to get everything accomplished here. I'm actually losing some free Dragoons, and actually maybe even a Probe Scout. I'm not sure he realizes what's happening. Scout! Moving his way to Hive Tech. He's still sitting on three bases is still significantly behind in supply, is way behind in upgrades. But he does have Lurkers and Hydralisks on the ground. Doodle with a single Observer, peeking out the natural expansion. We see the Hydralisks looking to come in from the north. Lurkers burrowing there. Doodle backing up. His army a little bit... a little bit in disarray here. And as a result, losing some Dragoons. 6 o'clock base, still denied. But we see the upper 3 o'clock base now being established. A Zealot trying to work at that upper 9. It's going to get taken out momentarily. Hive is here, though. Are we going to see some of those Tier 3 units before Doodle's able to jump on all of this, though? Archon very quickly wiped out. <clears throat> And Doodle at this stage just looking for a place to attack and not finding a good location. And Scout able to get his army gathered as a result. Although it looks like it's just walking forward and losing a lot of Hydralisk. Instaburrow 
some continued Psy Storms across. Nice Psy Storms from Doodle. And that's going to be GG from Scout. He's just too far behind. Lost all of his standing army. And Doodle still sitting at 140 supply. 137 at end count off additional bases. So essentially, at the end here, Scout not able to get an additional base. And Doodle takes instant two games. He's going to move on to the winner's match, which we will actually move on to right now. Because the opposite side of the bracket, again, we had a dropout from Jedi. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.